Alfred N. A. Price of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences in 1995, and the Science the and the same Academy awarded him the prize of the Academy in 1989. In 2011, the Alfred N. A. Institute the Janos Bolai Society and the Hungarian Academy of Sciences organized a conference in honor of Katona on his 70th birthday. Katona has visited India several times and he is closely associated with the screen mathematics community in India and thereby he is known to all. Also, he is closely associated with Adma. Such a great personality is going to give you a lecture. We are all very much blessed and fortunate to hear him. Now to Professor Katona. The second, yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, we are able to see. Okay. You, you are yeah. audible also. We are able to see that. Right. Namaste. Wanakam. <laughs> uh, since uh, a last part of the uh, particip a uh, last part of the audience is uh, Tamil speaking. I tried to uh, write down my name in, in Tamil language. Uh, this is the difficult. Uh, GY is one sound in Hungarian. It's a kind of soft D. <laughs> so first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me to this fantastic conference. But this is not the first time I, I am in Tirunel Valley. Uh, 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 Professor uh, Damir Chelvam invited me 12 years ago and I got such a uh, warm reception, not only warm, but uh, colorful. Very big color. I, I never got such a reception anywhere in the world. So <laughs> I was very happy. So let me speak about mathematics now. So I, this is just a notation. I will uh, always suppose that the, the number of vertices is n. I, I will not write in the theorems that it, it has n vertices, but it, it will be always uh, like that. And uh, so a very old, uh, easy question, find the maximum number of edges if G does not contain a triangle. And uh, the answer is uh, this graph. So it's, a, it's a, a complete bipartite graph with equal or almost equal uh, parts. So and half here and half uh, uh, floor here and half ceiling here and everything is connected with uh, two parts, but inside is empty. So uh, this is obvious. This does not contain a triangle. It's obvious because if you choose three vertices, then two of them must be in one part, and. Uh, and then there is no edge there. So it contains no uh, triangle. And uh, this is the number of uh, edges of this graph. And uh, this was proved by Mantel that this is the best. So if uh, oh, I, I, I wrote, in, in spite of my promise, I wrote the number of vertices is n, and so it contains no triangle, then the number of edges cannot exceed this number. So this is the, the, the best. So it, 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 this theorem is more than 100 years old. So next question, what happens if we have one more edge? So Of course, there is at least one triangle because uh, n squared over four floor was the maximum number of uh, 
edges without a triangle. So if you have more, then we must have at least one. But if we add one edge to this optimal graph, then obviously we, we have many more, not only one triangle, but we, we have a triangle between these two vertices and any other one in the other side. So the number of um, triangles will be and half uh, floor. And, uh, but, but is, is it uh, true that this is the, the, the minimum number? So if you, we, it, it's not necessarily the, the optimal graph for the Mantel theorem should be optimal for this one. But uh, Radermacher, uh, noticed that uh, this is the minimum, but he didn't publish it. And uh, many years later, Erdős started to study the, the problem. So uh, the erdős radermacher problem is that what is the minimum number of triangles in G if the number of edges is this? So, so we add T more edges. And uh, Erdős proved in 1962 that uh, he, he found a constant C that if T is uh, less than C times N, then every new uh, edge creates uh, N half floor triangles which is of course obviously true for, for the optimal. If we start with, with uh, the optimal graph for Mantel's theorem, so if we add an edge, then it creates always this many triangles, but this is also true in, in any way we, we choose uh, this many edges. This is the theorem. And uh, 20 more years later, Lovas and Shimonovich proved it that it goes up to and half. So, uh, so it means that uh, if we add um, many edges here, then it is true. But uh, you, you can see that if uh, the number of edges you add, here is many, too many, then these uh, triangles will coincide. So this, of course, obviously it does not, it cannot hold this uh, statement for, for large T's. So a small observation, if you consider this uh, picture, then uh, all, so we added now one uh, edge to the optimal construction in Mantel's theorem that we, we get, we got many triangles, but the observation on this page is that uh, all of these triangles contain this uh, vertex. So I, I say that uh, this vertex pins down all the triangles. And uh, so the next question is that what happens if we forbid this? So we want to have the edges in such a way that uh, the triangles cannot be pinned down by, by one vertex. So will we have more uh, triangles in this case? Uh, notation is tau g is the minimum number of vertices pinning down all triangles. So in this case, uh, this is one. And uh, this is uh, our 
first uh, theorem. It, it was just published in this year that uh, if G has this many edges, so one more edges, and we suppose that uh, uh, tall G is more than one. So the triangles we obtain cannot be pinned on by one vertex. Then the number of triangles is at least N minus two. So it, it, it almost doubled. Yeah, I have to uh, tell that uh, uh, she, she is my uh, student, PhD student from China. She will just defend uh, her thesis uh, end of October. And uh, in China, it's very important to have papers uh, as a first as a first author. So, so this is why, and, and on the other hand, she will never have, she will never have the occasion to be the first author because of, of X. So, so this is why she is the first author, <laughs> but we share the same, same uh, part, uh, same uh, proportion of the, of the work. Yeah. So, so this was the optimal construction in Mantel's uh, theorem. And, uh, and this is uh, the construction for, for this theorem. So we choose one edge here and one edge here, but then uh, the number of edges is uh, this plus two. So we have to delete one edge. So one of the edges connecting these two edges is deleted. So this is, this is deleted, this edge here. And then, so the number of edges is this. And uh, so what is the number of, uh, yeah. So the what are the triangles? This edge plus something here, this edge plus something here. And it's obvious that there is no vertex which, uh, uh, pins down all the triangles because if you choose this one, it pins down these ones, but doesn't uh, pin down the one on on this basis. So yeah, so then uh, this one has uh, uh, this is the basis of uh, of uh, this many triangles, and this creates this many triangles but two of the triangles are missing uh, because uh, because the, this this edge is uh, deleted so and and this this gives n minus two yeah so uh, let me go further a, a complete uh, graph on m vertices is denoted by k sub m. And now the more general question, the maximum number of edges of G, which if it doesn't contain a complete graph on, on M vertices. And uh, so look at this graph. We uh, distribute the vertices into M minus one classes. Uh, as equal as possible. So we, we start with the uh, floor of N over M minus one, and we end up with the ceiling. I didn't write here because it depends on the divisibility, if it's floor or, or uh, ceiling here. So yes, it's obvious that it does not contain a, a complete graph of M vertices because M, if you choose M vertices, the two of them must be in one class. And so, so this is, yeah, well, I didn't tell you that. So every pair of vertices from two different classes are joined. So this, these are joined, these are joined, and these are also joined, but inside of the parts are empty. So if you choose M vertices, then two must be in one class and they are not connected. So it 
cannot contain a complete graph on M vertices. And this is called the Turan graph. And uh, I will denote it uh, by T and M minus one. So N vertices and M minus one, almost equal classes. And uh, the number of edges is T and M minus one. So, so this corresponds to the N squared over four floor in the case of uh, triangles. Unfortunately, we, we don't have a, such a nice formula because of the divisibility problem. So it, 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 it is a complicated formula if you want to write down, but um, it's easy when N is divisible by M minus one, then you can write it out easily. And uh, so Turan uh, proved uh, this theorem that uh, this is uh, the best graph. So if it, uh, the graph does not contain a complete uh, graph on M vertices, then it cannot have more edges than, than, than this graph here. And uh, this is Paul Turan. And uh, this, this is a very good picture for me. This is Paul Erdős, this is Paul Turan, and this is Alfred Rainey, the, the three great mathematicians who influenced my life uh, very much. So uh, at the beginning, uh, in the first years of my studies, when I solved a problem of Erdős, of course, he didn't have a seminar. He was not an organizer, only posed problems. And I gave, uh, I explained the proof of my solution at the seminar of, of Turan. And uh, Rainey uh, came later to my life because uh, he was uh, teaching probability theory. And uh, he became uh, my kind of fatherly friend, so he was the closest one, but uh, uh, he was, all, all three played very, very important roles in my life. Yeah, so back to mathematics. Uh, general problem is if F is a fixed small graph. So earlier we had the triangle and the more general, the uh, complete graph on M, uh, vertices and in in the, in general f is a fixed small graph and then the maximum number of edges if the graph does not contain f as a subgraph not necessarily induced of course and uh, so our earlier results are mantel theorem looks in using this notation in this way that uh, x uh, and k sub three is n squared over four floor and uh, Duran theorem looks uh, like this. So in general, you can ask the question, what happens if we have one more edges. Of course, by the Turan theorem, there is at least one copy of Km. But again, when uh, you add this edge in one class, then you get many uh, uh, complete graphs on M vertices, namely, if you choose one vertex in every other class, then they will form a complete graph on and vertices because these are connected now and these are all in different classes so they are connected. So we, we get many, many copies immediately. Uh, and uh, so the number will be the product of these sizes. So the M minus two, we have M minus one classes, 
and uh, so the other class is the number of other classes m minus two and uh, the smallest one so I, I cannot write it out because it starts with floor but we don't know if this is floor or uh, ceiling. So the product of this is, this is the number we obtain. And uh, I, I mentioned uh, the theorem of Lovas and Shumanovich before. And uh, for the triangles, it was actually in the form of, of uh, complete M graphs that uh, uh, uh oh i i made here uh, an error so 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 this is this, <laughs> there are two conditions here i i when i copied the old theorem i forgot to delete this one so this is this is true so here we don't know the 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 bound exactly just a, a constant times n it's not 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 this one sorry so if m is uh, three then it becomes n half uh, one, one half so it, it is true under this condition that uh, the number of cost, uh, copies is minimum for for this construction so we we need at least we, we must have at least this many uh copies of k m if the number of new vertices is constant times n yeah and uh, here again all of them are pinned down by uh by one vertex so we can ask again so what happens if this is not true and uh, in uh, general uh, i introduced the notation tau mg the minimum number of vertices pinning down all copies of of k of m k, k sub m uh, the notation is not very clever because tau was introduced for triangles so and this is complete graph, but you understand my notation, I hope. And uh, so we posed in our paper, we posed a conjecture that uh, if uh, we have one more uh, edge and it the complete graphs cannot be pinned down by one vertex then the number of uh, of copies is minimum for this construction here uh, which is we choose two edges in two different classes delete one of the edges connecting these two and then we choose one vertex in the remaining m minus uh, three classes so this is a generalization of our theorem and uh, we, we couldn't prove this we posed this as a conjecture and uh Sigurd Liu and Dhruv Mubai proved it uh, if n is large so it's not not for for small and it's not necessarily true and uh, so truth ten <laughs> and uh, so they also obtained good results for the minimum number of copies of uh, km if the number of edges is t more and uh, the number of vertices pinning down is bounded by an s and uh, so they proved a, a general theorem for s and t and we posed another conjecture which was not completely correct so when t, when instead of 
one we had uh, t we tried to add edges here following uh, this construction but uh, we didn't choose the best one so they corrected it so uh, this is more or less the whole problem is more or less settled by them and uh, now i am asking uh, a new problem uh, so if even if we uh, have a bound that uh, how many vertices can pin down all the all the uh, copies of km or triangle now in this case only let, let us speak about triangles now uh, still they they are not uh, distributed evenly so so our question is now that uh, we want to have the degrees of the triangles nearly equal so now uh, this is notation so th these three gv is the number of triangles containing the vertex v so this is at, at a vertex so this is not the usual uh, degree in, uh, the, of the graph but the number of triangles containing v and uh, uh delta uh 3g is the maximum so this is the largest degree in the three degree or i don't know how to call it in the graph and uh, the question is that what is the minimum uh of uh this uh, largest degree over all graphs with n vertices and this many edges so, so we want to have this many edges and in such a way that uh, the, uh, the triangles are evenly distributed. And uh, I, we don't even have a, a, a good guess uh, for this. Um, okay, so let's go back to the general problem again. Uh, so I just remind you here. So this was the Turan graph, and oh, sorry. Yeah. So uh, the next uh, problem, what was in the history. Uh, was considered this one so so this is uh oh yeah yeah oh yeah 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 so this is a, a new not it's not a new notation so it's a special case of the turan graph k classes this is the number of classes and this is uh the number of vertices now in each class we have t vertices so all together we have t times k vertices so so this is just the old turan graph in a special case when the the classes have the same size and uh, uh, elders suggested to study this number so when this is forbidden what is the maximum number of edges and uh, so in this uh, theorem of elders and stone uh, they proved uh, that is basically this times and choose uh, two. So, so this this is here the little o depends on on t of course. And uh, so, why exactly this graph to consider and. Uh, I, I don't know, I, I should have asked Erdős when he was alive, but it turned out that this was a very important uh, case. Um, it didn't, at that time, it, you couldn't see that this is, this is an important, it's just, just one of the strange graphs. And uh, because it, this theorem easily 
implied the following Elder Stone Shimonovich that uh, if the chromatic number of F is K, then we, we have this uh, asymptotic uh, solution. So uh, it, it, it was an, an Elder Shimonovich uh, paper in 1965 when they realized this one, but uh, everybody uh, thinks that stone should be added because uh, this was the difficult part. So uh, this, this, this part is easy, easy. So you have to only notice that uh, uh, this is true. So only the uh, chromatic number, asymptotically, only the chromatic number is uh, important. So it means that uh, we, we have uh, the asymptotical value of X and F for every F basically, right? So, but it's still interesting to uh, determine the exact values. So it does not tell. So if, for instance, uh, you, it gives the exact value for a triangle, and uh, if you add one edge to one end of the triangle, then uh, this will be a new graph and the chromatic number is the same. And, uh, and, and uh, the, the extremal graph is not the same. So it, it's, there are hundreds of papers where people determine the exact values for uh, several small graphs F. But if the chromatic number is two, then uh, there is a little problem. Namely, we get this one. So this is zero. So in this case, we actually obtain from Erderstone Shimonovich that uh, uh, the number of edges is uh, little o n squared. So the order of magnitude is less than n squared, which is, uh, it can't be anything. So I am sorry, at this, this part of my lecture, I am giving a kind of survey, but as far as I see uh, from, uh, uh, in India, this is not so uh, much studied, so it's better to have some uh, information about the, this area. So, so it, we don't know if it linear, this is linear or a higher power of n between one and two, we have no idea. So, so this is uh, probably the most interesting remaining question of extremal graph theory when f has chromatic number two and uh, there is a, a important uh, paper kuvari shosh turan from uh, 1954 I formulated only in this case when C4, so this uh, cycle of four vertices is forbidden, then this result, but actually they give uh, an upper bound for a more general case when this is a uh, um, bipartite, complete bipartite graph. And uh, and, but for this case, when we uh, have the C4, that the construction giving this uh, result using uh, finite projective geometry, a, a very a beautiful uh, construction. And this is Vera Shoos. Uh, she was a wife of Turan. 
and uh, she is now 91 year old and she is still uh, active. So I show you the next example. So now ST and uh, so this is a, com a bipartite, complete bipartite graph with S and T parts. And uh, so C4 is a special case because K22 is just uh, C4. And uh, this is not solved in general. Uh, the difficult part is when T and S are near, nearly equal. So Kola, Runya, and Sabo uh, settled uh, the case when S, so one of them is much larger than the other one, namely T is at least two, and then the other one is T factorial plus one. So it's big. Then they were able to prove it. And this upper bond is basically in the paper of Kevari, uh, Shosh, and Turam. But uh, so, so their result is the construction. And uh, uh, it uses uh, heavy algebraic geometry. So this is one of the examples that uh, uh, algebraic the defined graphs are also important in constructing uh, the best solution for some uh, external graph problems. The third example, now I am starting our second theorem. So P K is a path of K vertices. This is this is very difficult. People always confuse uh, in a path when k sometimes denotes the number of vertices, sometimes number of edges. So here I want to make clear that I denote by k the, the number of vertices. So it looks like this. And so let me show you a graph without a pk. So I don't know if you can see this index here k minus one. So these this is a complete graph on k minus one vertex, and these are copies and uh, vertex disjoint copies. Uh, here this this looks empty, but it's they are full, of course. So even in the case when uh, n is divisible by k minus one, then we divide the underlying set into this many uh, parts, each have size k minus one, and we these are complete graphs on k minus one vertices. And it's obvious that you can have only uh, a path consisting of k minus one vertices, so it, it does not contain a pk. And uh, what is the number of edges here in this case when, when it's divisible? And then this is the number of uh, complete graphs. In one complete graph, we have this many uh, edges, and this is k minus one times k minus two. So you can cancel k minus one. So this is the result. So it has this many linear. So uh, you remember I, I said here that in the case of what, when uh, the chromatic number is two, then we know only little o n squared. And we had examples when the exponent was three over two. We had uh, examples when it was Two minus one over t. It, it when t is large, then it's very close to two. And uh, in this case, we obtained a linear uh, bound. And uh, 
Erdős and Gallai proved in 1959 that uh, this is the maximum. So here we don't have an equality because if it's uh, div not divisible, then we don't have in, uh, equality. This, this was the case when we calculated, it was only when it is uh, divisible. Uh, and is divisible by k minus one. But the upper bound works for every uh, value, every n. And uh, later, Fodri and Shelp and independently Popilov. Oh, this this is I. Uh, this is wrong. I. I'm sorry. I I didn't correct here. Uh, that that's that's seventy five this uh, year. So Fodri and Shelp proved in 75. So they de determined the exact value when it's not uh, divisible. And uh, in that case, the construction is uh, sometimes you just take a smaller complete graph, but sometimes you have to combine the last two. But in, even in this case, you, you take these uh, K minus, complete K minus one uh, graphs, but at, at the last two might be, com uh, has to be combined sometimes to get the, uh, the best construction when it's not divisible. But what happens if G must be connected because uh, this is obviously very much not connected. And uh, look at this uh, graph. So here, this is a complete graph on, so S is a, is a parameter here. And uh, this is a complete graph on this many vertices. This is a complete graph on S vertices. And this is an empty graph on this many vertices. And uh, Bipart complete bipartite, complete bipartite. And I, I don't want to prove it now, but you, you can uh, feel that uh, it, it cannot have, uh, because this, this blocks the path. So you cannot have more than uh, uh, a path more than K minus one uh, uh, vertices. And uh, a theorem of Ballister, Dury, Lehel, and Sharp is that uh, one of these gives the, the maximum, namely, it's always either S or, or this one, the largest possible value, or the smallest uh, possible value is the better one. And, uh, and uh, this one is the best until a certain value of n, if n is larger than the, this uh, threshold, then uh, this is uh, the best. So S is this, this value. So now I can pose uh, our problem, what we solved uh, with uh, 20. So I, I don't introduce the general notation but you, you, you understand that we can exclude not only one graph, but more graphs. So here you can write a family of graphs. So everything is forbidden. And uh, in this case, we forbid a path consisting of K vertices and a complete graph on, on N vertices. So what is then the minimum? And it's obvious that it's interesting only if K is larger than M. Otherwise, uh, if say M is equal to K, then if you forbid the PK, then you already for, forbid um, KK also. So yeah. So I just went back to the Turan graph and uh, so if uh, n is uh, k minus one, 
and it's k minus one, it cannot contain, of course, a, a pk because uh, too few vertices. And uh, so that, therefore, this one doesn't contain, uh, by definition, it doesn't contain a pk. It does not contain a KM also because we have M minus one classes. So this, this is a good construction, but it very small N. And so we can uh, mimic the construction for the erdos gollai uh, theorem, namely uh, take copies of this one. We, we have shown, I, I repeated it because these are two small letters. So each of these have our vertex disjoint copies of, of this uh, graph, special graph with the uh, Turan graph. And if it is divisible, now we have this many copies and uh, then the number, number of edges will be this times the number of edges in, uh, in one of them. And uh, so this is uh, construction one. And uh, there is another one which is mostly better than this one. So it, it, it is already different from uh, Erdős Gollai case, but this construction plays some role also here, but it's not, not, the, not mostly it's not the best. And so construction two, it is similar to the Ballister Dury Lehel uh, shell construction. We take a, a, a complete graph on k half minus one vertices, m minus two classes, an empty uh, part uh, for the rest. And this is a complete bipartite graph again. And uh, so the number of vertices is uh, uh, this time uh, this, and, uh, and the number of edges here within uh, this. Oh, sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I think I, I said it's a complete graph. It's not a complete graph. It's, it's a Turan graph on, on this many vertices and this many classes. And uh, so our theorem here is uh, that uh, m is at least three, of course, uh, because if m is two, it means that there, it contains no edge and k is larger than m and n is large. So we were able to prove it only for large n's. So if g is connected, so we suppose that G is connected and contains no KM, no PK, then uh, the maximum number of edges is uh, this, this one, if it's connected. You, you remember construction one was not connected, so it cannot be. So what happens in general, so I crossed out now connectedness, and uh, then the maximum of uh, the edges is attained either for construction two or is at most this one. Uh, I cannot write that it is equal to this one because of the divisibility. So if, if N is not divisible by K minus one, then uh, it's not exactly, there's a small difference, but basically this is the uh, max, maximum uh, sometimes. And uh, I write some, some a little bit, uh, I compare the two uh, constructions when they are better or worse. So if K is even, even in this case, when we don't, suppose that it's connected, the graph is connected. Even in this case, construction two is better. And uh, when K is odd and K is larger than about 
double of M, then construction two is better. So it seems that construction two is all, always better, except one exception is when uh, connectedness is not supposed, K is odd, and uh, K is smaller than equal to two M minus one. So this, this uh, not connected construction has some small role. And so this was uh, the end. Thank you for your attention. In, in Indian languages, I cannot say uh, such a complicated thing. Just uh, Nandri, Nanni, Dhenyavad, Dhenyavad Agadu, don't know. Oh, you have listened to a beautiful, exhaustive, and a very instructive lecture from Professor Katana. Any questions from the listeners? If there are no questions, let us thank Professor Cardona for giving a new beautiful lecture. Okay. Thank, bye, you. Bye. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to chat this session. Thank you, Patana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Professor RB? Sir, good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? No, just a minute. Just you have joined. I, I, I was about to tell them to make you as host. I think I, they have already made it. Okay. I, did they Thomas Sundaram talk to you? No, no, sir. Regarding uh, the workshop that you are planning. Okay. Uh, no, not it. Oh, can I announce it now? Yes. Professor Katona? Professor Balakrishnan? Hi. Katona, Professor R.B. Uh, Balakrishnan is speaking. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hi, Gela. Hi, hi. Hello, Gela. Yeah, hi. How are you? I am fine, thank you. <laughs> okay. I, but, I, I thought I would make an announcement with regard to the workshop that we are planning. I, I cannot hear you really. You can't hear me. I thought I would yeah. uh, announce, make an announcement regarding the workshop. Oh. <laughs> that we are planning next to July. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, friends, I am pleased to inform you that uh, there will be an international workshop on combinatorial graph theory or combinatorics and graph theory. Uh, at uh, uh, the Coimbatore, uh, you know, university, Arena University, uh, uh, on, during Amrita uh, Amrita University, yeah, Amrita Vishwa Vidya Vidya Mukherjee yeah. Amrita University, uh, during uh, July 14, 15, 16th of next year, and it will be in physical mode not uh, online. So when I wrote to Professor Katona saying that uh, it will be on physical mode, he immediately jumped at it because, you know, I cancelled several flights so far. He said, at least this one <laughs> I want to make it. So it will be on combinatoric mostly. So there will be five speakers uh, uh, in that uh, workshop. Already one is myself, another is Professor Katona, and the third is uh, uh, Professor uh, from uh, IIT Bombay, Niranjan Balachandra, and two more we are almost fixed, but not finalized. So that will be in July of next year, 13, 14, 15 at Amrita University. So all of you 
are uh, quite welcome to participate in it. We will, of course, we will be getting uh, information about it in future. Thank you. Yes, sir. Money get done. Sir. Uh, sir, Swami Narayan, sir, would you like to please conclude? Sir, Swami Narayan, sir, please right, conclude. I have, yeah, yeah. I, have, I have told that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have listened to a beautiful lecture, yes, and yes. I very much thank Professor Katana for giving me several opportunities. In fact, I have been listening to his lectures right yes, from yes, 1995 or so. So, okay. I thank you very much, sir. And uh, we expect you to give many more uh, physical as well as online lectures uh, in the future. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And organizers for giving the opportunity, especially Professor Tamil Chalwa, to meet you now. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Ranjini? Yes, sir. Thank Please you, sir. Come. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the wondrous session. I also thank Professor Dr. B. Swaminathan, who initiated the session for us. So shall I conclude? Yes, yeah, please. The next session begins at 3.15 p.m. The chairperson for the next session is Professor Dr. Mukti Acharya and the resource person for the next session is Dr. John D. Lagrangi. Thank you.